Hi, we're here at FETAS with... Max. Hi. And something I'm very interested to see is his new invention. Can you show us more about it? Yeah, sure. Um, it's basically the XG hot then. It's supposed to be small. It's very quite cute to look at. And it basically has a new kind of system to make it rigid. So this thing, you can't break it, you can't push it off. Uh, it uses a nozzle that goes all the way through the ring heater. So as you can see, it goes all the way through and it's kinematically coupled. That means that makes it basically rigid. So you can remove those two screws, one screw and two screws. Then it removes the whole hot end from the basically the frame. It removes. So you have this aluminum piece, which is then on your extruder or your carriage. And then you can move basically this hot end and it's kinematically coupled. So you can remove the heat sink, which cools the heat brake, which is this little piece right there. And this is just bolted on on top. And we use those three screws to basically then kinematically couple it. And this makes it then basically rigid. So this is the um, idea behind it. It's rigid, it's small, and it has a very sharp temperature transition. You know, and you can change right, out so the why do, we, why do we care about this? Um, because the shorter your transition zone is to your hot end and to your temperature you want to reach, um, the better it is for the filament. So as the filament goes through, it starts heating up and ideally you want it to go through and then suddenly have 200 degrees, it's melted exactly. and it goes through the nozzle. Exactly. That's our perfect nozzle system. Obviously a perfect system doesn't exist. So we try to get as close as possible to it and we achieve that with this kind of system so that it's very sharp filament goes in, ambient temperature, it's hard, easy to extrude. And then as it gets in there, into the nozzle, it starts melting very, very fast because it's instead of having a gradual transition, it's very sharp and goes up and it melts a lot faster this way. Right, right. So this, this thing here kind of packs all of the latest ideas that we've maybe seen in, in uh, other new uh, hot ends. Exactly. It, it's trying to be lighter so that it can move faster. Exactly. It's, it's light, it's, it's light. High acceleration for, for Corex Y printers. Exactly. So it's try to be light, but yet you still like quality materials, which are optimal for thermal conductivity. For instance, copper is a good material, you know, it pushes a lot of heat through it and can take away a lot of the heat from the heat break. Titanium is the exact opposite. It's the most ideal um, metal to not have a um, temperature transition. Um, so the, the, the temperature doesn't like go through this kind of titanium. So this is the idea between the heat break to push as little material away from it. And that little heat that goes into there is then dissipated from the optimal material copper. Yeah, you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. You know? So we try to combine the best materials with it to have an optimal performance. All right, you know? awesome. Yeah. So that's the XG hot end. Yeah, for extreme gradient. I so found something else. This is an extruder from the extruder. Yeah, from faders, yeah. Um, it's called the Apus. What's interesting about this and that it caught my attention is that it looks very, very different from the other newer extruders. Maybe this is not the lightest, I guess? No, it's like 155 gram. It's not the lightest, but it's not the but heaviest. Almost, almost, yeah. yeah. So it's like this gear, man. I like this gear. Yeah. We've been told that another word is like steampunk extruder. Exactly. Which is, that's what I like you know, when people call it. It's like something I would have actually like, liked to call do, it, you know? You can do this. Yeah. You can easily rotate it back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, so you could almost manually extrude, yeah. manually 3D print? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a new 3D printer hand plotter. You can then, you know, put a hot end in there and then, you know, make your All right. movements. Why don't you tell us more about it? Yeah, so the Apis extruder um, came from the idea that um, Fetus wanted all these kind of hot ends and they wanted one extruder that fits all of them, you know. And um, the solution was that we have then basically this little plastic piece, which you can also 3D print and there's a step file and you can change that to fit different hot ends and you just then always plug it in. And then two screws here from the side that push it in and hold this little plastic block and the hot end there. So that is basically- So you could- it. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So you could just- Yeah. You could just pick this up and it would yeah. go like this. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Or you can then remove those two screws and then, you know, get this with this little plastic piece again out. 
and then change from the, to this hot end. So there's multiple options which you can use and it's not limited to our product range. So this plastic piece can be changed also to fit other hot ends on the market. Yeah, um, this, is, this is something that I like is that you're not, you're not trying to get a customer locked into your system. No, no. And no. like they later have to only buy your stuff. No, like no. They can mix and match however they want. No, we would, I don't think that that's going to be ever our philosophy that we want to have a completely closed system that nobody has access to because mm -hmm. we manufacture hot ends for all kinds of 3D printers and people that want to modify the 3D printers, it is so important and it's accessible. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, awesome. So that's why we try to keep the system as open as possible. So let's a bit, now let's get a bit technical around that. It looks cool. You can manually load, unload filament. Yes, that's all the little nice features. But the technical stuff, which like intrigues me the most, um, is that the center of mass. So where is the mass located? is roughly around here. Mm -hmm. So, and oh, our attachment options, exactly, it's in the middle and right above your attachment options here. So this attachment is what you put on your carriage. So when the printer moves, it's very close to where you attach it. Yeah, the so cool it won't... Thing, yeah, won't exactly. Make... It won't wobble as much. And if you attach then the hot end to it with this kind of system, the center of mass yeah, moves yeah. around, moves down even closer to the attachment yeah, option. So that's perfect. Yeah, so it's ideal for like core XY printers that do like rapid movements in different kind of direction, not just a, like a portal 3D printer that moves back and forth where it's maybe less important. Yeah. But like for these core XY printers, your center of mass um, becomes so important, especially in the future. And I hope uh, in the designs, we will look more into where is our center of mass to improve the core XY 3D printing experience, you know? Um, so that's also a small little tidbit about this extruder. Um, yes, and it's obviously, if something goes wrong, it's easy to disassemble. Again, two screws, you get your hot end out uh, and you have a jam, let's say. You remove that little idler arm and it pops off and you have access to the whole filament path. And, yeah, you maybe know, clean it if needed. Exactly, you can clean it more easily like this and you have access to the whole kind of system. So that's what I kind of like. And the aluminum frame here um, acts like a heatsink for the little motor because these motors, they're small, yeah, they, they get, get hot. They get hot. Yeah, yeah. Thing about it. So this heat, this uh, aluminum frame cools it down, you mm -hmm. know, to keep it um, a bit cooler and you can push a bit more current so it has even more power in it, you know, if you need it, you know. Yeah. So that these are kind of the main features on this kind of uh, mm -hmm. extruder. I guess there's no problem printing flexibles and crazy materials. No, like flexibles, it works also really well. You can even, you know, if you 3D print that part, even more constrain that filament path if you really want to. It's already pretty constrained, but if you want it, you can strain it even more because flexibles, if they are pressured, they want to move in every other direction than through the nozzle. So they choose every other option. And um, constraining the filament path makes sure that it stays in there. And um, the, the, the better, the shorter it is. So, you know, a shorter, a shorter drive gear from here to here is even better for highly flexible, but anything like, you know, ATA, Ninja Flex or Filler wow. Flex or something. Right. Like, that's not a problem. That that's should good work. enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that works. But if you want to go even, um, you know, lower 60A, stuff like that, then you need a uh, more uh, compact extruder like the Omnia Drop or, you know, other extruders on the market that has like very short filament path. Otherwise, you can not control these flexible filaments, you know. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, enjoy the show. So I found yes. something I wasn't supposed to find, I think. There's something wrong here. Can you tell the problem? Like someone calculated something wrong. <laughs> Tell us about this. Yeah, so the Positron 3D printer um, from Kralin, um, who worked on a printer that prints upside down. Right. So the print bed moves from the bottom up and then basically the nozzle is here at the bottom. And what they try to achieve is a compact 3D printer. So obviously if you would have used a normal nozzle or a normal hot end, it would have taken a lot of its build space away and he wanted to save build space so he moved it by 90 degree and once the filament yeah, went like this you can feed it from the side exactly and it moves it then basically up and the odd thing even though you know as engineers we thought first like oh yeah it looks kind of strange that can't work that, that... he showed that it that it works so wow. we decided okay how can we make a hot end for him and for the Poseidon 3d printer that achieves a good performance um using existing already uh, knowledge from Fetus. And this came out. So uh, it's an ingenious, cool idea. It looks so strange, but it works so well. So uh, yeah, it's a really cool, really cool, funny hot end. So we're very proud of this new kind of system because it's so new, it's so different. And we like at Fetus and Drop Effect to work uh, on new kind of 
hot ends and strange designs just to see if it makes things better or improve upon it, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Try, try things. Yeah, like see, you do. You, like you do on exactly. your YouTube channel, you also try like yeah. a tool changing yeah. system, yeah. completely new system of thinking about um, how to change tools, for instance, and multiple tools, you know? And these kind of ideas, that's what we like, you know, we love about the 3D printing community. It's uh, that, yeah, that like encourage what, us to make new things. What, I can, what, I'm, what I'm starting to realize lately working on my own project, yeah. Is that you see something like this and you're like, well, it's just changed, <laughs> changed a little bit from what there was here already. Like we already had most of it. Or you have this printer is almost like the other printer. But in fact, all the little details that you think this will definitely work, it will, it will not work. It's like, so much work. Like it, I it's 99% it's failures yeah. until you get something that actually works and then you put it here and it looks nice. Exactly. That's exactly you described yeah. it perfectly. It's like these one percent where you think like this little detail that changes everything. And it's usually when you like walk around, think about something else, and suddenly this idea comes into your head, and it's like, yes, that's how I can solve my issues. You know? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for dropping by. Yeah, and enjoy the show. All right. So for people interested in your awesome stuff, yeah. tell us where they can find you. Um, so we have multiple resellers for Fetus. Um, Altway is one, 3D Prima is one, 3D Jake is one. So on the Fetus.com website, you can find all our resellers for our products. And also on the Drop Effect website, dropeffect.com, um, you'll find um, other products like the Omnia Drop and some of the XG hot end information as well. Excellent. So that, yeah. And for you, stay, stay awesome. awesome.